Christ's Father, we pray. Amen. Amen. Be seated, please. The theme of our message this morning is what type of vessel are you? What type of vessel are you? In the body of Christ, there are different types of vessels. There are vessels unto honor and vessels unto dishonor. And also there are vessels for temporary use and there are those used on permanent basis. Vessels for temporary uses are those that after being used are subsequently dumped. Whereas vessels for permanent uses are for keeps. Examples of vessels for permanent uses are those golden cups, the trays and the candlesticks we use in the church, just like our silver spoons, forks, and ceramic plates in our kitchen. We are asked, vessels for temporary use are the types of the disposable plastic plates and utensils we use to eat after church and we throw them away into the trash bags. So it is with all human beings, what types of vessels do we wish to be? As we are free, we have the free choice to determine what we want to be. Every child of God must decide what type of vessel he or she wants to be and make every effort to work towards achieving that status. We all know shepherd staffs, like the one Moses used was carrying when God appeared to him in the burning bush. If you remember, God used him to perform many miracles with that staff or rod, and also his brother Aaron. He too had his own staff or rod. And it was this rod that God used to identify Aaron as his chosen high priest when his authority was being challenged by the whole tribes of Israel. What did Moses do? Moses asked all the captains of all the 12 tribes of Israel to go and bring their own rod, that is their walking stick or whatever you want to call the rod. So, they have 12 rods. And those 12 rods, he said, write your name on each rod to identify you. And I'm going to put them before the Lord in the tabernacle. So, yeah, Moses put all the rods in the tabernacle. And what happened in the morning? The rod of Aaron started boarding. What do you understand by that? This is the time of spring. When we go out, you see all the dry trees that have been sleeping for the past winter. They are all boarding now. So, so which means that if you see a dry road like this, boarding, will you call it magic or witchcraft? So in other words, if you have a pastor like Pastor Mana, who will now transform this dry stick, this dry road to start boarding. You agree with me that his church will no longer be here. We don't be in Tucker Street, we'll be in Philadelphia, Columbia Street. And my own application to join his church will be waiting for six months before approval. <laughs> and after all, who will not be or who will not like to serve under that kind of a pastor? Because I know for sure that if Pastor Mana can turn this dry stick into button, and he considered me worthy enough to be serving under him, he will transform my aching bones into that of a 21 year old. Yeah. And I will be able to dance yeah. and yeah. talk to yeah. Pastor Mara. Yeah. Fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And that was what the children of Israel saw in the morning. They saw the Aaron's rod body. Now, I am sure we all know the importance of what God has done. So, Aaron's, became, Aaron's rod became a symbolic testimony of authority of Aaron as the chosen vessel 
by God, and hence God commanded Moses to keep that rod of Aaron that had bought it in the Ark of Covenant. And I'm sure we all know the importance of the Ark of Covenant to the children of Israel. And these are examples of vessels for permanent use, as we read in Hebrew 9 4 b. This ark contained the gold jar of manna, Aaron's staff that had bought it, and the stone tablets of the covenant. But the jaw bone asses, like the one Samson used to kill the Philistine, if you remember again, you remember Philistine, you remember Samson? <clears throat> he had to fight the Philistines and then he got a hold. He got hold of a, the, the dry a, a, a jawbone of an ass to kill so many Philistines. And then the, 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 the jawbone was dumped. It has no permanent use, as we also read in Judges 15, 15 to 17. Now, the status of a vessel or anything that determine whether a vessel is worthy of permanent or temporary use is determined by the nature and preparation of the vessel. And this is why the Bible in 2 Timothy 2 21 says, If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensils for honorable use. Your life will be clean and you will be ready for the master to use you every good works. A vessel of honor is not used and dumped. They stay with the master forever. To be set aside as a useful vessel, the Bible enjoins us to depart from iniquity. In fact, I'm going to ask us this afternoon, what is iniquity? I am sure we are all going to have so many definitions which may not really apply to us. Hence, I'll try to find out how the Bible describes iniquity. The Bible uses words such as iniquity, transgression, and trespass to indicate disobedience to God. They are all categorized as sin. In Micah 2 1, it says, Woe to those who plant iniquity, to those who plot evil on their beds. At morning light, they carry it out because it is in their power to do it. The Hebrews word, Used most often for iniquity means guilt worthy of punishment. Iniquity is seen at its worst. Iniquity is premeditated, continuing, and escalating. And when we flex with sin, we fail or we fall for the life that we can control it. But like a cute baby monkey can grow to be a wild, out of control primate. Sin that seems small and harmless at first can take control before we know it. When we give ourselves ever to a sinful lifestyle, we are committing iniquity. Sin has become our God rather than the Lord. I am sure this is one of the reasons why Apostle Paul in Romans 6, 1 to 2 said to those who they have been saved by the secret of Jesus after his resurrection, and hence they will always be forgiving their sins or iniquity. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We have those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Jesus made a profound promise to all verses of honor. In John 14, 2 to 3, he said, he said, In my father's house are many mansions. If it we are not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That we are I am, there ye may be also. Irrespective of the level of preparation of a vessel. The user of the vessel has the prerogative or the right to determine what type of use he will put the vessel. The Bible gave us hope in assuring us that no one is born to be useless, as everyone is born with certain individual gift and talent, as we also read in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 7. 
Now, are we read subjects by the same spirit? And there are varieties of ministries, and this is a lot. There are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons, but to each one is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. And these manifestations are what? One. For one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, to, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same spirit, and then to another faith by the same spirit, and to another gifts of healing by one spirit, and to another the affecting miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another the distinguishing of spirits, and to another various kinds of tongues, and lastly to another the interpretation of tongues. Apostle Paul concluded by explaining in verses 11 and 12, but one and the same spirit works all things, distributing to each one individually, just as he wills, for even as the body is one and yet has many members, and all members of the body, though they are many, one are one body, so also is Christ. Jesus Christ is the head of the church who laid the foundation we are building upon now. Just as man is the head of the house as explained to us in Ephesians 5, 22 to 25. In Colossians 1, 17 to 18, we read about the supremacy of Christ. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. He is also head of the body the church and he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will come to have first place in everything. Hallelujah. 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 For it was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in him. As the Father had conferred all authorities and power in Jesus Christ, so has he also conferred powers and authorities on man as both head of his wife. Oh, two passages in the New Testament make it clear that the head of the church is Jesus Christ, as we read above in Colossians 1 17 to 18. What we have read above points out a brief comparison between the human body and the church. The church is the body, and Jesus is the head. Jesus was before all things. <laughs> and hold all things together. This includes the church as well. In Ephesians 5, 22 to 25, it speaks of the relationship between husband and wife, and includes the teaching of Jesus as the head of the church. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husband as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. His body, of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. So it is both ways side. It's not one way side. So in this passage, wives are to submit to their husbands as the church submits to Christ and husbands are also to sacrificially love their wives in the way that Christ was willing to die for the church. In this context, Jesus is called the head of the church, his body. He is also called a savior. What does it mean to be the head of the church? Both Colossians 1 and Ephesians 5 emphasize the leadership of Christ and his power. In Colossians, Christ is the head because he holds all things together. In Ephesians, Christ is head because he is Savior. The meaning of this teaching are profound. First, church leaders, especially the men, are to surrender ultimate leadership to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one who leads and determines the teachings and practices of the church. The position the Bible puts men as the head of the home 
occupying the same exalted status as Christ, the head of the church, requires men to measure up to the expectation of leadership in the church. It is because of the exalted position which Christ has entrusted to men as the head of the home and custodian of his church that earn men the respect and the honor given to them in all churches. We are told in the Bible that all power and authority within the church is derived from Jesus Christ as the head of the church. And Jesus in turn ordained men as the head of his church as we read in Matthew 16, 17 to 19. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Blessed are thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever thou shalt lose on earth shall be lost in heaven. Amen. 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 I use this opportunity to congratulate the few men who have taken that bold decision to register for the long-awaited Christian leadership training course, which we started historically yesterday. I can assure all that our pioneers of this promising christ Center Institute, both men and women, whenever the names of all dedicated men and women that came together to embark on this pilgrimage to our promised National Bible Institute under the auspices of Mount Zion Fellowship Church, your names will be remembered. Amen. Just like Jesus remarked concerning the repentant sinner, the woman with the alabaster oil, anointing Jesus in Matthew 26, 7 to 14. The woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table when the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste? They asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Are we of this? Jesus said to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you. But you will not always have me. Right. When she poured this perfume on my body, she needed to prepare me for burial. Mm. Truly, I tell you, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will always be told in memory of Amen. her. Amen. And the Zionists that started yesterday, wherever. The history of the institute is being told, your name will be mentioned, will never be forgotten. May God continue to strengthen you all and increase you spiritually in your journey through this lifespan. Men and women of Zion, for answering this clarion call to submit yourself for Christian leadership training, despite the fact that most of you are also learned and teachers as well. What attributes? and virtues qualified Jesus Christ to be so honored and respected in this position as the head of the church. Jesus Christ did not build his church on Apostle Peter and then Peter on his own to carry on without his full support. And you may want to know what the support he gave to Peter are. Uh, one, he loved the church. As we read in Ephesians 5.25, husbands love your wives. Even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Two, Jesus Christ cares for the church. As we also read in John 10, 14 to 15, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. And I'm known of them. As the Father knoweth me, even so I, the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And also in Ephesians 5, 29 to 30, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, 
But notice that cherishing it even as the Lord, the church, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. And three, Jesus provides for the growth of the church. As read in Colossians 2, 19 to 20. They have lost connection with the head, from whom the whole body is supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows as God causes it to grow. Since you died with Christ to the elemental spirit forces of this world, why, as though you still belong to the world, do you submit to its rules? And for Jesus prayed for the church, as Manah, Pastor Mana used to pray for the church for all the saints. He prayed for them this morning too. So he's emulating the example of Jesus Christ in John 17, 20 to 26. And this is Jesus' prayer for all believers. My prayer is not for my servants who I have called alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their messages, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them, and we continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. This is more than a covenant Jesus made with us, that he will continue to make the Father known to us in order that the love that God has for Jesus may also be in us and he too in us. And therefore, church members are to follow Christ first and earthly leaders second. As those leaders emulate Christ, as we also read in 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. And in 1 Peter 5, 3 to 4, he said, Not loading it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. All of you, clothe yourself with humility towards one another, because God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Amen. Yes. Apostle Paul led the church with visionary leadership, example, by always trying to strive for the progress of the church. And by working diligently and family in dealing with his brethren, we should cooperate with our leaders to fight the common enemy, which is Satan, and not allowing ourselves to be used as a stumbling block for the progress of the gospel of our Lord and Master. Our leaders are also human beings like you, except that we are called as mouthpiece of Christ, as Apostle Paul explained it in 1 Corinthians 2, 3 to 5. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Uh, my message, uh, my preaching, we are not in persuasive wells of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and the power, so that your faith will not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. The Bible wants us all to be very careful in dealing with God 
And we must not assume we are wise or clever or intelligent. Every word of Christ in the Holy Bible will not return to him void. Our own job is to tell them so that we will not be held accountable for the reward of their disobedience towards Christ. As the Bible specifically spelled it out in Revelation 22, 11 to 13, let the one who does wrong still do wrong. And the one who is filthy still be filthy. And let the one who is righteous still practice righteousness. And the one who is holy still keep himself holy. Behold, I am coming quickly. And my reward is with me to render to every man according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. The love Jesus has for the church is expressed in his desire that we also love the church. It is our fervent duty as members of Mount Zion Fellowship Church to have great passion and love for Mount Zion. We must see it as our church and hence continuously pray for the church to prosper. As King David also advised children of Israel concerning Jerusalem in, Mark, in, in Psalm 122, 6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May all who love thee, the city prosper. In the same vein, we encourage you to always pray for the peace of Mount Zion. May all those saints who love thee prosper. If Mount Zion Fellowship prosper, we shall all prosper. Amen. Let us remember. Amen. Let us remember that the ultimate leader of any church is the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I will build my church as he emphasized in Matthew 16, 18. It belongs to him. He delegated all these responsibilities upon trusted members honored with leadership positions. And these posts are not for seeking public recognition or vain glory, but to serve as he himself demonstrated the servant leadership, example by the washing of the apostles' feet. This is one of the reasons why Mount Zion Fellowship Church was registered, one, to develop children of God to be transformational leaders of society. And two, to develop leaders for ministerial excellence and to be responsible citizens through our Mount Zion Fellowship Ministerial Bible Institute. The institute is fully registered as contained in our articles of registration available to you, for you to cite. When you are fully trained and have become vessels of honor, you will be able to overcome the three things that can change any vessel of honor into dishonor. And these are Satan, sin, and the world. As Apostle Paul warned us in Romans 6, 13, he says, Neither hear ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but ye your yes unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instrument of righteousness unto God. I pray for you that you will be a vessel of honor for the permanent use of God in Jesus' name. We pray the Lord We give us the wisdom, the courage, and the passion, the heart of complete service and dedication in total submission to the will of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we bow our head for prayer? Our loving Father, we believe that church is the body of Christ founded on the rock that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. The scripture says that neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything but only God who increases. Relying on this promise, Father, we enter into your presence for the growth of our church, Manziah Fellowship Church. As the living word says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. 
we are totally helpless. Apart from you, we can do nothing, for we are totally hopeless. We beseech you, Lord, to pour out your life-giving spirit and your enabling power upon Mount Zion Fellowship Church in an abundant measure and thus bring about a total revival in this church. Purge away all the sins, iniquities, and uncleanness from our church. Let your ears be open towards all the prayers that come to you from this Mount Zion Fellowship Church. Day and night, may it be pleasing to you, O Lord, as sweet incense before you. Let your glory cover this our church, Father God. Place your mighty outstretched hands on every saint, our youth, our children, and all our leaders. Let the gift of prophecy operate in our church, Lord. So that your word, which says, but he who prophesies edifies the church may be realized in the church. Help all the leaders to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Father, let your grace always abide in all of us. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. May God bless you all. Hallelujah. 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 This is not Pastor Lambo's first time of preaching. It's the first time of preaching in Mount Zion Fellowship Church. Amen. Pastor Lambo, thank you. God bless you for the powerful message you delivered this morning. Okay. Because one of the things I learned when I came to the body of Christ, there are different ways of preaching. I'm a structured person and systematic. And I like when somebody goes from one step to another and another. It didn't take us all over the place. And I actually admire that type of teaching. And thank you for the message. So it was very profound. You see, in Greek methodology, I think we had Zeus, right? Zeus was a god who was the one who put the universe according to the Greek methodology together. But Hercules, I believe, was the one who held it at last. Amen? But Jesus Christ had everything in the universe together. And that's the message I got today. Only Jesus Christ can do that. No man can do that. No other God can do that. But Jesus Christ. Because of his supremacy. Thank you for the message. God bless you. Now, sir, can we stretch our hands unto the Father? Father, we thank you, O oh God. We bless your name. We glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, for what you are using our Father for in these end times. Even at the young age of 80, O oh God, he has the power, the anointing, O oh God, Jehovah, to deliver your word with power and authority in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, O oh God, for your unction upon him, O oh God. We pray for your spiritual rest upon him, O oh God, Jehovah. We pray, O oh God, that you replenish him in the name of Jesus. Even as the story is your word to come and impart into us, my Lord and my God, I pray, O oh God, Jehovah, that you give him insight into your word. Fresh, fresh illumination into your word in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We glorify your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Now, so let's remain standing as we close. I just want us to take two prayer points this afternoon as we close. Amen. amen. Are we all blessed to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Can we give a mighty love clap for Jesus this afternoon? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are in the month of April. And the month of April is the first month in the Jewish calendar, amen? amen? But for us, it's the fourth month in the Roman calendar. And, you know, it was called the month of Abib, but the new Jewish people, when they, in, in the time of Passion, they call it the month of Nisan. Actually, it is this month that the children of Israel were actually released from bondage. Mm -hmm. That was the month of Nisan that they left Egypt. Mm -hmm. So it's the month of release. Amen. It is the month of freedom. Amen. 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 It was also the month that Haman cast the poor for the Jews to be eliminated. It was in that month as well. But God, we know in the end, delivers his children. So this afternoon, we're going to take two prayer points. Our first prayer point is going to come from the book of Isaiah 61 1 and I will read it said the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach 
good tidings to the poor. Mm -hmm. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. And the opera, opening of the prison to those who are in bondage. Amen? Amen. And Deuteronomy 15 2 also says that Amen. it was the month, okay, that also every seven years was the month of Nisan that would release you from your debt. So it is a month of release. So we are going to pray this afternoon that this is the month of release for you. It is a month of release for your marriage. We're going to pray for a month of release for your finances, for your health, for breakthrough, both spiritually and physically, materially, mentally, politically, economically, and socially in the name of Jesus. Shall we begin to pray this afternoon? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. Father, we stand upon your word of God, Jehovah. That in this month of Nisan, oh God, we pray for release. Release, oh God. Release your children from every bondage. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray for release in your marriages, oh God. That any man, any woman, oh God, Jehovah, these are failing in their marriages, oh God. We pray, oh God, that in this month of Nisan, we pray for you, oh God, that you release them, oh God. We pray for release in our finances. We pray for release in our marriage. We pray for release. mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are going to take our last and final prayer point this afternoon. We're going to stand upon the word of God this afternoon in the book of 2 Kings 17, 39. He said, but the Lord your God you shall fear. He will deliver you from the hands of your enemy. That the hand of God will deliver you from your enemies. We are going to pray. It is a month that God wants to deliver you from the oppression of the devil and his satanic cohorts. It is a month to get yourself released from the grip of your enemy. When the devil seeks to condemn you, break out of his hands. The enemy cannot contain you. So this morning you are we're going to pray and you are going to prophesy over yourself. You are going to decree and declare over yourself. 